Thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reversing course and now sending a delegation to Washington to discuss the Israeli assault on the last Hamas stronghold in Rafah. That decision comes as Netanyahu says Israel is just a few weeks away from finishing off Hamas, even though many nations oppose Israel's plan for a major attack. A major Jewish political analyst has a warning after the Biden administration's actions at the United Nations this week shows the U.S. isn't interested in defeating Islamic terrorism. And during dark times like the aftermath of the October 7th attacks, where can one find hope? We're going to hear from Jerusalem about getting peace from God. All those stories and more ahead today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We're going to begin this half hour in Israel, where Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has reversed his decision and will now send a top-level Israeli delegation to Washington after all. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, the reversal means the U.S. and Israel will continue their face-off about whether Israel will launch a major ground assault on Hamas's last stronghold in Rafah. Announcing that the Israeli delegation to Washington is back on, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he canceled it to warn Hamas that Israel will not be pressured into ending the war or giving up on its hostages. It was a message first and foremost to Hamas, don't bet on this pressure, it's not going to work. All this triggered by a U.S. refusal to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire without linking it to the release of the hostages. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman told CBN News the U.S. action aided Israel's enemies. Uh, you know, Hamas was uh, celebrating this. Hamas, uh, Ismail Khania from Hamas traveled to Tehran to do a victory lap, you know, with the mullahs about this. I mean, this was considered a victory for Hamas. Now, any, any U.N. resolution that's a victory for Hamas is, is obviously... Uh, a move in, in, the, in the absolute wrong direction. Uh, uh, the idea that you could pass a resolution and not condemn Hamas as part of it is just unthinkable. Meeting with U.S. lawmakers in Israel, Netanyahu said they're just a few weeks away from finishing off Hamas as a fighting force. However, much of the world opposes an Israeli invasion of Rafah the terror group's last stronghold. And we think there's a better way, and uh, we want to have the opportunity to present that better alternative to Israel. So we do think it's important that that meeting take place. Netanyahu insists that the two million Gazans in Rafah can avoid the battle by simply moving back north. Yes, they have a place to go. Second, you know, we provide them food. Uh, the problem was not the entry of trucks. The problem was the stealing of trucks, both by looting by Hamas and looting by others and so on. In Jerusalem, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says the U.S. should support Israeli forces going into Rafah to destroy Hamas's last four battalions. October the 7th was like Pearl Harbor and 9-11 on steroids for the Israeli people. And the response to October the 7th is total victory, the destruction of all military capability, battalion-wise, of Hamas. Graham also explained why Israelis are so troubled at the U.N. resolution, demanding a ceasefire without demanding Hamas free the hostages. I understand the Israeli position. You have to be clear there will never be a ceasefire unless the hostages are released. Chris Mitchell joins us now from Jerusalem with more. So Chris, Netanyahu says international pressure to end the war against Hamas won't work. Does the rest of the war cabinet and Israeli government support him on that? Well, from what I understand, Ephraim, uh, Yoav Gallant, the defense minister, really wants to go to total victory. Uh, I have heard that many Benny Gantz uh, may not be as adamant as uh, Gallant or Netanyahu. Uh, it really seems to be a moment of truth for Netanyahu. Many people would say it's like his Churchill moment, moment as uh, Churchill stood against uh, Nazi Germany uh, almost alone uh, before the beginning of World War II. Uh, so uh, Israel feels isolated right now. I would say most Israelis are behind behind Netanyahu. Uh, I talked to an Israeli yesterday who said, you know, they've never been surrounded like this, not only in the south, but also in the north. And I think many people are fearing and looking forward 
to a potential bigger war with Hezbollah. And uh, also, this, uh, this Israeli was talking to me about the importance of Christian support when Israelis and Israel feel so isolated and alone right now. Chris, here in the States, uh, American leaders keep saying there's a better way to defeat Hamas than a ground invasion of Rafah. Has anyone explained what this better way would look like? Well, not that I know of, and they say an invasion would be a catastrophe, but haven't heard of uh, any alternative. Uh, we just heard uh, Matthew Miller there from the State Department. Uh, he said they'll be discussing that when I believe Ron Dermer, who's the uh, strategic affairs minister, and Zaki Hanegmi, national uh, uh, security advisor or communications advisor to Netanyahu. Uh, and I'll even Lloyd Austin said there, there would be a way to defeat Hamas without an invasion. But uh, I'm sure they're going to be talking about that when they meet in Washington, uh, presumably in a few days. But uh, we haven't seen really the alternatives uh, that the United States and the White House are talking about right now. How much progress would you say Israel has made against Hamas so far? Well, so far in the war, since uh, back in October when they, the land invasion began, uh, they've degraded or destroyed 20 or 24 battalions uh, of Hamas. And, uh, and right now, Israel has started making preparations for a ground assault into Rafah, but it hasn't started. And, and of course, that's because of the, the differences between the White House and Israel, as well as the international pressure. Uh, Hamas is using those two million people or so in, in Rafah as human shields. And uh, that's why Israel said it's so important to be moving them. Uh, the London Telegraph is saying that some senior Israeli officials believe they may not be able to destroy the remaining Hamas battalions because the U.S. has turned against them. I'm not so sure that's, that's the case. But one important point is ammunition. How much more do they have? How much more is the U.S. going to supply with them? Do they have enough to defeat Hamas and then turn around to a potentially larger war with Hezbollah, a war that some say could come in May when the weather's better, when the ground is dry, and after the Jewish holiday of Passover. You sat down with the former U.S. ambassador to Israel, David Freeman. What else did he have to say about America's abstention on the vote at the United Nations Monday? Well, from what he was saying, it really did upset a lot of people here in Israel. It made Israelis feel like the U.S. wasn't on their side. Uh, he made the point that the U.S.-Israeli relations will survive in the long run. But in the short run, it really helped Hamas dramatically. Uh, Hamas, as he said in our report, they celebrated this. No coincidence that uh, Hamas's leader, Ismail Haniya, went to Tehran right after the U.S. abstention. Uh, it really sends a message to Hamas that they can hang in there uh, until Israel is stopped by America. Uh, but yet Israel is rallying around Netanyahu. Uh, in this time of war, even if many people here politically may not agree with Netanyahu, uh, they will stand with him because of the, the, the unity they need while fighting Hamas and potentially Hezbollah. And he also said it was kind of offending the people of Israel and really sending the wrong signal uh, at the wrong time. Friedman has also proposed a plan for peace. What can you tell us about that? Well, he, he says this is the opposite of a two-state solution. That's something that the Biden administration has been pushing uh, for several months now. Uh, and he makes the point that uh, really they've tried a Palestinian state in Gaza for 17 years, ever since uh, Israel pulled out unilaterally in 2005 and Hamas took over in 2007. It didn't work. But he makes the point you can't keep saying no. So what are you for? He says uh, this will be a plan not to make Palestine free from the river to the sea, but Israel free from the river to the sea. He's uh, projecting, he's proposing sovereignty of Israel from the Jordan River to the, Pal for the Mediterranean, permanent residency for Palestinians, give them the right to travel, the right to stay, and an economic plan funded by the Gulf countries that would improve the infrastructure, roads, hospitals, and they can vote, it can't vote in national elections. And he uses Guam and Puerto Rico as models for that. And he really thinks it's a win-win for both Israelis and Palestinians. All right, CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reporting from Jerusalem. As always, thank you for your insights. Stay safe. And of course, we back here praying for you and the entire team there in Israel.
Coming up, a warning from a major Jewish analyst as he says the Biden administration isn't serious about defeating Islamic terrorism. We're going to hear from Jonathan Tobin of the Jewish News Syndicate when we come back. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. Jonathan Tobin, the editor-in-chief of the Jewish News Syndicate, says this week's U.N. vote on Gaza calling for a ceasefire without requiring the release of hostages shows the quest for peace in the Middle East peace is a sham. Appearing on this week's episode of The Global Lane, Tobin says the Biden administration's refusal to veto the resolution sends a signal to the rest of the world. The U.S. is no longer interested in defeating Islamic terrorism. Hamas has more than just hope that the West will bail it out or allow it not to release hostages. Hamas has been sent a signal by the U.N. that they have every reason to believe that they will be allowed to emerge as the victors of this war that Israel will be prevented from from eliminating them in their last um, hold in their last uh, enclaves inside Gaza where their military forces remain and for the United States to say that this is okay to say that they're acquiescing to it and that uh, the, the release of hostages shouldn't be linked at the very least to a ceasefire including American hostages is more than just a betrayal of Israel, although it is a betrayal of Israel and its security. It's a betrayal of American interests, because this is a signal to the Middle East that there's nothing worse than being an ally of the United States and that they will allow an Iranian proxy, an Iranian ally, to triumph. Why should anyone be an ally of the United States if we're going to let Iran get its way, if we're going to let genocidal terrorists like Hamas be allowed to get away with the largest mass slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust. So, Jonathan... It's a betrayal of American interests. Well, Jonathan, I, you know, many of our viewers wonder why more pressure isn't being placed on Hamas to release all the hostages so they kidnapped, uh, including children, before any ceasefire is considered. So, in your opinion, why isn't the Biden administration doing that? Politics, in one word, politics. This administration, uh, President Biden, uh, the Democratic Party, you know, leaders of the Democratic Party, like Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer, all are convinced, because they live in a leftist bubble, that the reason why they're trailing Trump in the polls, the reason why they look to be losing in Michigan, is that they have been insufficiently anti-Israel and too anti-Hamas. What they, they think they need to do is to signal the left-wing activist base that they're really against Israel, that they're a they want Hamas to survive. They think that will bring them votes on the left or for Muslims and Arab Americans, and it may help them with some of them, although I think most of them were going to vote for the Democrats anyway. But it is not only bad policy and a betrayal of an American ally and a betrayal of American values, it's also bad politics. And the U.N. continues to say that many children and others in Gaza are starving. Yet I saw a recent statistic that said 250 humanitarian deliveries are now arriving in Gaza each day. That compares to about 100 daily uh, in February. The U.N. is misinformed, do you think? Or what do you know about this? Aid has been flowing into Gaza every day. If anybody, and, and Israel has allowed that even when they were supposedly blockading Gaza, Israel allowed convoys of food and fuel to enter it every day, paid for its electricity. Um, if anybody's starving in Gaza, and some people might be, just as people are definitely being hurt by this war that Hamas started, frankly, to the cheers of the Palestinian people, if they're starving, it's because Hamas is stealing the aid and using it, taking it into the tunnels and using it only for their fighters and to uh, for themselves. They are harming their own people. And indeed, the more Palestinians are killed, the more Palestinians who starve, the better Hamas thinks it is, because all they're interested in is optics and pictures of people suffering so that Israel can be demonized. 
to put the onus on Israel instead of putting the onus on Hamas to lay down its arms is to have all this backwards. It's a moral inversion and deeply, deeply wrong. And I'm I'm sure to see that some Democrats are pushing back against this, but not enough. This is a really bad thing that this administration has done. Its own voters should be revolting against it. But too many of them are locked into that same leftist bubble, uh, indoctrinated with uh, radical ideologies like critical race theory and intersectionality that falsely brand Israel and the Jews as uh, white oppressors of people of color. This is nuts. You know, this conflict isn't racial. Jews and Arabs are the same race. The majority of Israeli Jews are themselves people of color by, by the definitions of the American left because they trace their origins to the Middle East and North Africa. This is all a moral catastrophe. And what must be done the moral thing to do, if this was a morally serious government in Washington, it would be placing the pressure on Hamas. It would be demanding the release of the hostages instead of placing all the pressure on Israel to stop the war that can is the only solution to this problem. Okay, Jonathan Tobin, during this Easter, as we approach Passover, there seems like even greater urgency to pray for the end of this war and the peace of Jerusalem. So thank you for sharing your insights. We appreciate you. Amen to that, and thank you. Also on this week's episode of The Global Lane, Christians could be jailed under a new law in India prohibiting prayers for healing and the multiplication factor. A successful furniture entrepreneur explains some biblical steps to take to find prosperity in business and in life. You can catch The Global Lane this evening on the CBN News Channel. It's going to begin at 8 Eastern. You can also see it on the CBN News app or on YouTube. Still ahead, many people have asked where can hope be found after a tragedy like the deadly terrorist attack of October 7th. We're going to hear from Jerusalem about how peace can be found by turning to God. The story is coming up right after this. When the events like the October 7th massacre and kidnappings in Israel happened, it can be hard to imagine finding peace or joy following that. For many, it may even cause doubt about loving God. As Paul Strand reports from Jerusalem, the place where Christ was resurrected, there are those who insist we must realize only God can grant us joy and peace during a dark time. This is the garden tomb in Jerusalem. Many people believe Christ rose from that tomb or one much like it. And from that resurrection comes the ability for every person to find and be united with a very living God. Most years around Easter, the garden tomb is filled with Christians coming from around the world to rejoice and worship God. However, due to October 7th and the ongoing war against Hamas, garden tomb director Simon Holland expects far fewer visitors. We're just seeing very small numbers of people come here at the moment. And there's a great fear, I think, in people in just knowing there's a conflict and war. These times of suffering, death, and destruction can also lead to doubt about God's existence. That's certainly not the case for Georgian and Winnie Banoff, whose ministry brings joyful worship to some of the world's hardest hit places. Why do that? Because they believe only God can fill people with true joy and peace, especially in tough times. He is life, resurrection, joy, hope, peace, love. How can we live without that, especially in this time? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, and only the Lord can pour that strength into us, like he did when Georgian met God. Unstoppable joy came. He filled me with the Spirit. Christ came inside him. God will actually will go inside you, if, if you ask. That Holy Spirit fell on the disciples soon after Christ's death and resurrection. It gave them great power to reach millions and overcome persecution that threatened to snuff out Christianity. The early church had their share of you know, hard times, but my goodness, that the, the spirit of Christ is, uh, no one can conquer that spirit. And when he makes his home in you, you, you can't be conquered. Winnie points out the Holy Spirit still lives today, ready to give believers everything they need to rejoice, even when times are really tough. The spirit of the living God is the only one that can really sustain us 
through hard times, through persecutions, uh, e even through martyrdom. Georgian says people shouldn't blame God for happenings like the Holocaust or October 7th. The devil exists and uses evil to fight back against God's goodness. Resistance, of course, because Adam turned this earth to the devil. So every day we're taking away from the devil his authority, his authority, his property. He doesn't like it, so he's fighting every inch. Simon points out Christ died on the cross to undo the devil's evil. It's where Jesus enters into all that tension, that pain, where he's reaching into the brokenness of the world and holding it with love. Um, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so we find God at the very heart of suffering, of death, of pain, of cruelty, of injustice. The Bible says the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but God comes to give life and life more abundantly. And there's no place that we can go now where God has not been to come and find us, even when that is in the depths of despair. Georgian and Winnie believe everyone can know this Lord. If they wonder, is there God? Say, God, can you help me believe? If you're real, show up. That's how I said it. God, if you're real, show, show me right now. And he did. Just ask God, do you exist? Do you want to be a friend with me? He will answer. He will show himself to those who seek him. And he will give them the love, peace, and joy that can conquer any circumstance and help them rejoice in even the hardest times. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from the Garden Tomb, Jerusalem. We'll be right back with an encouraging word for your day ahead. Stay with us. Download the CBN News app. One place for all of your news. Breaking news alerts. Watch CBN News Channel Live. CBN News. Because truth matters. Get the CBN News app today. Welcome back. Time for your Thursday. Thankful. I invite you to join me in this prayer of gratitude. Father, thank you for sending your son to suffer for me to die for me and to rise for me. In that act of love, he resurrected me. And for that, may we all again say thank you and amen. With that prayer of gratitude, walk in Thanksgiving on this Monday, Thursday and Resurrection Weekend. That will do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. You can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online, cbnnews.com. Take a moment, let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. We'll see you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye, God bless.